Hello and welcome to Plus Sports on Plus TV Africa. I am your host, the humble Mikhail Tinubu. It's uh, Wednesday and today I have with me my... Uh, Mudashiri Shitu. Mudashiri Shitu is joining me live as we discuss all the relevant sports stories from around the world. It's, uh, it should be an interesting one, Muda. D definitely, it has to be interesting because um, the lineup shows are interesting stories for us to discuss. Yes. We'll talk a little bit about uh, what's happened in Chelsea with uh, Werner and, of course, uh, the story that's still shocking everyone, Serena Williams is retiring. That All of the fallout from that we're going to get to. Now, of course, this year, the Port Harcourt Club uh, Rivers United became the first to win the Nigerian League Championship. The Nigerian champions, Rivers United, are in a difficult situation as a result of the 2022-2023 CAF Champions League draw, which makes it less likely that they would go through the group rounds of the competition. In the draw that was made on Tuesday, Rivers United and Watanga FC of Liberia will trade blows over the course of two legs in the preliminary stages opening round. Although Rivers United are the favorites to win against a team making their debut in the continent's top club championship, the Liberian champions are no pushovers. Rivers United won the Nigeria Professional Football League championship for the first time this season, similar to Watanga FC. However, the pride of Rivers participated in the CAF Champions League last year and defeated Tanzania's Young Africans on aggregate in the first round. However, Sudan's Al Hilal stopped United's uh, advance to the group round in the second preliminary round. The victor of this match between Rivers United and Watanga FC, though, faces an even more challenging task for a spot in the group stage. The victorious team will compete against Wydad Athletic Club of Morocco, the CAF Champions League champions. Interesting um, um, features um, for Rivers United, and um, they're still in the euphoria of um, what they did in the Nigerian Professional Football League. And um, what's more interesting is the fact that they've been carrying off cash on them mm. by the Rivers um, State Governor Wiki, His Excellency, and the Governor of Rivers State. More interesting is that um, a lot of people don't know that um, there were Sharks and um, Dolphin mm. United before before they merged, oh. um, before they became. Um, um, Rivers um, United. But going into this Champions League, as you said, is expected with the support from the government because, you know, it's monetary, um, uh, uh, it needs a lot of cash for them to go the first leg, the second leg and all that. So to me, I feel um, Rivers United, with the qualities of players they have, they can really go to that place um, through the group I'm staying. Speaking of cash and resources, we've talked in the past about how perhaps it's best for these uh, Nigerian and clubs to be privatized, left in the hands of private owners, just like in other countries. The Premier League, a lot of investors come in, take up the responsibility of managing the club, uh, assess the needs of the club on a day-to-day -day financial basis. And, are, and because the passion to win it, as, is coupled with the passion to make uh, money, to make profits, they succeed where we fail in Nigeria, where a lot of our clubs are in the hands of the government. I want to visit the fact that Rivers United have benefited from a, a generous governor, whereas other, other clubs aren't so lucky. And we've seen the benefit of that, them being champions of uh, the Nigerian Football League just this year. How much more how much how much big a leap can they make if that kind of support continues uh, um so much um, leap they can make and um, first and foremost um let us also remind um, a lot of people that the league management company um, proposed such um the first of all the proposal was based on the community based clubs that means that the community should own the club the second proposal is that um, state-owned club should sell 50% of the shares to a private sector rather than um, the government 
owning it. More, uh, most governors, um, state government, don't have the much attention that is meant to be give, mm -hmm. given to a club for it to succeed. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is why um, some clubs, like Canu Pillars also so they got relegated this year. So that proposal have not been really met. I've met uh, many all those um, along the way because of them. Um, some people would not benefit if the government hands off um, um, for, for, um, day to day affairs of um, the club. Also, is that some state government use the club as uh, a political tool to channel their, their, their progress. So that is why when they win, mm -hmm. go, the go government is always, uh, or the government of the day, or the government of the day also, is always behind the club. So it has met so much orders, but if we want to succeed as a professional football club, mm -hmm. then government, state government has to answer. That is why, for example, Lagos State refused to own a club. That's why um, in the past we had the code United just mm -hmm. of recent, mm -hmm. and also MFM too. So the best for any club to succeed in this country is either um, government should sell 50% of the shares to private investors or they should hands off um, club. That is Completely. when it can really have um, the best of the best of, of you know, management. You know, continually, one of the debates that raged on uh, for the last, I don't know how many years, our national team managers do not pick local born, local trained players. But my stance has always been that if these players aren't getting the best training facilities, aren't getting to play the toughest opponents, aren't quality for quality, pound for pound, on the same level as their European counterparts, who started in Nigeria but made their way abroad to uh, via their trade, um, I would say that that in itself is a, a measure a barometer to test the quality of the player. If you can escape the shores of Nigeria to be valuable in, in Europe. If that is the case, why do we continue to ask that our local boys be picked when obviously their standard is not at the level of the European uh, colleagues that we continue to recruit every time we have competition? Yeah, the first thing remains that um, if a coach is employed, uh, La Paseo, mm. it's, um, there's always a clause and there's always an assign of agreement. And that is first and foremost the most important thing. Mm. If, um, if, if, the, if the clause is not um, to sign local base players, regardless of how developed our local league is, the players will not be brought into the national team. Now, it has to take um, the... the, the the belief of the coach mm -hmm. to bring in local base um, players into to super egos. Mm -hmm. That is why the list of Ikeshi is always a yardstick. Mm -hmm. And um, also the 1980 Nations Cup we won, the coach at that time, these are yardstick to determine that, oh, we saw Sunday with this, um, at least of Ikeshi bringing seven or six players, the likes of Sunday, Umba, the likes of um, uh, um, some of the other players there, they brought, he brought them to the Afcon in South Africa, and they won it. Mm. That to show that uh, he as a product of the local league, he believed in them. Mm. So now, but if a foreign coach is coming, that perhaps doesn't know so much, and if his contract does not entail, the agreement is not signed on that paper that he needs to bring local base players, he will not look at that um, direction. So the fact, the issue of bringing local base players into um, the national team depends on the agreement with NFF and the Super Eagles. And if NFF does not believe so much or give the prerogatives only to the um, coach, he has, even if our league is developed as um, so much as expected, we will not be seeing players because it's not signed and they don't have, you have to believe in something before you think of bringing Bring them, them in. in. All right, thank you, Muda. Let's move on to uh, Chelsea's Germany striker, Timo Werner, who has now signed a four-year contract to return to Bundesliga side RB Leipzig. The two clubs announced on Tuesday, August 9th. British media said Leipzig are bringing Werner back for about £25 million after Chelsea paid 
the German forwards 45 million pounds release clause back in 2020. The 26-year-old spent the largest part of his senior career at RB Leipzig between 2016 to 2020 and is the club's all-time top scorer with 95 goals. Timo Werner's uh, sign-in is a special transfer for us, Leipzig's commercial director for sport Florian Scholz said. We saw Timo become the club's record goal scorer and the journey international. His return means a lot to the supporters because Timo was a real fan favorite and figure of identification for a lot of people. Werner made his Germany debut in a Confederations Cup win over Australia in June 2017 and now has 50 caps. I'm very happy to be able to play for RB Leipzig again, Werner told the club's website. Werner parted ways with Chelsea after two years in the Premier League club, where he lifted the Champions League trophy plus the UEFA Super Cup and Club World Cup in 2021. He made 89 appearances for Chelsea, scoring 23 goals. Yeah, in interesting uh, move. Um, Albi Lazic definitely knows so much um, about that player. Mm. And we saw the headline at the time he moved to Chelsea. He was so much on the ground. But, you know, it's football sometimes and um, we expect um, such to happen. Mm. But having faith in him and bringing him back, you understand, and even paying money mm. to bring him back, like the statement stated that yeah. he's a fan's favourite, he's someone that um, the club will always want to have back based on certain things. Mm. One, is a club record holder, is a fan's favourite, and um, he brought so much um, to the German club mm. at the time he was there. And it's not a CV, there's a lost of form, mm. or there's nothing really uh, well, pampering to his career. To them, mm. you understand, it might be to Chelsea, mm. but to them, they, I, I, I believe that um, what he did before he left for Chelsea, he still has the ability to do that. Werner definitely had a lot of options. Juventus were looking at him, Dortmund were looking at him, and even at a point after uh, Lewandowski left uh, Bayern Munich, there was a consideration and a discussion about whether they needed to replace Lewandowski and whether uh, Werner should be brought in. Even just two years out from his original transfer from RB Leipzig to Chelsea, I find it interesting that um, his value on the market hasn't diminished by that much. It's, they still paid roughly over half of what Chelsea paid for him back in 2020. Um, but we can all um, accept and agree that Werner did not live up to the expectations. Some famously say that um, he's the reason... Lampard's uh, period, his regime during uh, his second, well, first full season at Chelsea was so unsuccessful that ultimately led to him being fired. If Werner had been scoring the goals that he was bought in to uh, score at the time, Lampard might have still been at Chelsea at this point. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I don't want to so much um, put uh, the sack of Lampard on a particular player mm -hmm. because in football it's always a team effort. Mm -hmm. um, the lack of goals might be because of the midfielders are not passing, definitely mm -hmm. getting to him. Mm -hmm. But th that aside, two things we've learned is that um, the value of the player, like you rightly said, and I also believe has not really um, gone down the market just to sh let people know that which I want to say the, that is not really the sole cause of um, the sack of Chelsea. Mm. And the price of its value really shows that it still has what it takes. Mm. Perhaps, and I want to strongly say that you see him doing all what is expected um, of, of him in Chelsea, now that he's back to his parent club, um, to back to his, um, his former club. To me, a lot of things still needs to be done because we had likely see that even after Lampard, even to this very stage, there's still a lot of things that needs to be done to Chelsea. Like we saw them losing, um, the, the, we saw the first game of them. Um, well, of the, season. Uh, the, the first game of the season definitely wasn't a, a nail biter, it wasn't exciting. However, let's move on to some tennis uh, as uh, Nick Carragher's carried on his strong form with a straight set win over Sebastian Byers in the Canadian Open first round on Tuesday in Montreal. The Australian, who won last week's City Open and reached the Wimbledon final in July, saw off his Argentine opponent, 6-4, 6-4, to set up a second round match against world number one Daniel Medvedev. Also through his Spanish 14th seed, Roberto Bautista Agut, 
Following a 7-6-5-6-3 victory against American qualifier Marcus Giron, uh, Bulgarian Grigor Dimitrov seeded 15, uh, 15th beat Canadian wildcard Alexis Galaneo 6-4-7-5 uh, and will next face Australian Alex de Mineur, who edged local favorite Denis Shapovalov 7-5-7-6-4. Uh, French veteran and 17th seed Gael Monfils defeated Spaniard Pedro Martinez. 764 3662 Dane Holger Rune got the better of Italy's Fabio Fognini. 6375, while Britain's Daniel Evans sent Serbian Filip Krajinovic packing. 621660. American teenager Coco Gauff has credited Serena Williams and her family for paving the way for the next generation of black female tennis players. Williams, 40, told Vogue that the countdown has begun towards her retirement, prompting an outpouring of praise for the 23-time Grand Slam champion for her groundbreaking impact on the sport. Gauff said the entire uh, Williams family, including older sister and seven-time major winner Venus uh, Williams and her father Richard, who first put a racket in their hands, also served as an inspiration. The 18-year-old said she still wanted a crack at her old idol before she retires, which is expected to come after the U.S. Open that kicks off later this month in New York. Legends like Serena Williams are basically um, um, gods of old, mythic creatures. Uh, she, the loss of such a legend in the game, how big of an impact is that going to have on everyone? Not just little girls, but even little boys who want to get into the sport. Yeah, it um, cannot be quantified. Um, so many things she has done, and um, she was waiting for the 24th um, Grand Slam to be the first ever to win the 24th Grand Slam in an open era. Mm -hmm. um, nothing short of inspiration, nothing short of work ethic, mm -hmm. nothing short of um, uh, um, good, um, um, good examples she, ha she has laid um, throughout her career because um, she single-handedly showed the rest of the ladies, even including her sister, mm -hmm. that um, she's always the lady to be. So if she's out of this, um, we would never see somebody in a long time that will have to conquer um, tennis for a very, very long time because she actually conquered. Um, there's a time she was winning the four Grand Slam in a year. She did back to back. Mm -hmm. And um, it's interesting, her life should be um, a case study. So to me, mm. the best is that um, we should learn from what she has done. All right, thank you. If uh, any woman in women's tennis deserves a statue to represent all of what women's tennis uh, represents, it's Serena Williams. As always, thank you everyone for joining us on Plus TV, on Plus Sports. Uh, Thank you, Mudashiru. Yeah, it's so, it's a here. pleasure having you. My here. name is Mikhail Tsinubu. As always, I like to remind you, life is never boring with some sports. Have a wonderful day.